हेलो एवरीबडी वेलकम बैक टू दिस सीरीज ऑन फाइनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग वंस वी हैव अंडरस्टूड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ फाइनेंशियल अकाउंटिंग ड्यूरिंग प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स इट इज़ नेसेसरी फॉर अस टू अंडरस्टैंड अबाउट द डबल एंट्री सिस्टम ऑफ अकाउंटिंग वन ऑफ द अकाउंटिंग सिस्टम्स प्रैक्टिस यूनिवर्सली एंड फोकल पॉइंट ऑफ आवर सिलेबस फॉर द सब्जेक्ट अंडर स्टडी A system is a structured way of performing a particular function. Accordingly, accounting systems implies the processes and procedures adopted in discharge of financial accounting function. The most prevalent accounting system all across the globe is double entry system of accounting. In the previous lecture, we have understood dual aspect concept of accounting. This concept states that every transaction has two aspects: debit and credit this concept of accounting is the very foundation of double entry system of accounting the origin of double entry system of accounting is traced way back during last phase of 15th century the first book on double entry system titled summa de arithmetica geometrica proportionata proportionatilia was published in the year 1494 the writer of the book is luca pacioli a french monk He is remembered for his contribution to the field of accountancy. This book is regarded as one of the very important milestone in the development of accounting discipline. It was for the first time that concept of double entry accounting for business organizations was extensively discussed and elaborated. Double entry system of accounting is that system of accounting which records all the accounting transactions twice. once for debit and once for credit it works on the baseline that for every debit there is an equivalent corresponding credit and for every credit there is an equivalent corresponding debit this means that every accounting transaction is debited and credited for the same amount it also means that for every accounting transaction there has to be a minimum of two accounts but not necessarily only two accounts the number of accounts affected by a single transaction may be more than two but the aspects that are always two debit and credit and the amount debited for a given transaction equals the amount credited for it and vice versa now let us have a look in some of the important definitions of double entry system of accounting every transaction involving money or money's worth has a two fold aspect the receiving of value on one hand and the giving of the same value on the other hand the two fold nature in all the transactions must be recorded in the books and give rise to the term double entry system of bookkeeping this definition was given by carter the two fold defect of every transaction is recorded under double entry system one effect being the receiving of something and the other effect of giving of something in other words every transaction involves two accounts a receiving account and a giving account this definition comes from w pickles in a nutshell we can say that double entry system of accounting is such a system of accounting where a transaction is debited and credited for the same amount it implies that total amount of all the debits is equal to total amount of credits though total number of accounts debited may differ from total number of accounts credited this understanding of double entry system of accounting calls for an insight into understanding of the following terms the account the word account literally means details or description of transactions entered in practical terms we use this term to represent give and take relationship with somebody but technically an account is a particular heading or title which has been either debited or credited in a given transaction in physical terms 
It represents a T shaped structure in a ledger for maintaining all details relating to a single title or heading which has been debited or credited while passing various journal entries of the firm. What is important to note is that a single title or heading may have been used many times, but for maintaining all its details a single account will suffice. The format of a typical account appears like this. As seen each account is divided from the center, left hand side being debit side and right hand side being credit side. The debit side of the account is meant for recording the debit aspect of an accounting transaction. Similarly, the credit side of the account is meant for recording the credit aspect of accounting transaction. Each side is further divided in four columns which can be described as follows. First column is date column. This column shows the date on which transaction took place. Then comes particulars column. This column shows the name of the opposite account. We will further understand it while discussing accounting process. Next column is JF column. JF stands for journal folio. We will further understand it while discussing accounting process. Last column is amount column. This column is self explanatory. You can understand that it is used for writing the amount of the transaction. Same four columns appears on the right hand side of the account as well. Now let us talk about debit and credit. The term debit is represented by abbreviation DR. It is basically used to represent the left hand side of an account. The words to debit imply making an entry on the left hand side of an account. At times it is used to indicate the decrease in owner's equity. Similarly, the term credit is represented by abbreviation CR. It is basically used to represent the right hand side of an account. The words to credit imply making an entry on the right side of the account. At times it is used to indicate the increase in owner's equity. Whenever a transaction is written in account, it either represent an increase or a decrease in that account. This increase or decrease is connected with the fact that whether the account is debited or credited. In certain accounts, increase in recorded on debit side and decrease is recorded on credit side. Whereas, in certain other accounts increase is recorded on the credit side and decrease is recorded on the debit side. This will be clear from the following. Seen from a particular dimension all the accounts of a business can be categorized under following heads. Accounts of assets, accounts of liabilities, capital account, accounts of incomes and gains, and accounts of expenses and losses. For asset accounts, debit signifies increase in assets whereas credit signifies decrease in assets. While for liabilities, debit signifies decrease in liabilities and credit signifies increase in liabilities. Likewise, for capital account also, debit signifies decrease in capital and credit signifies increase in capital. As far as incomes and gains are concerned, on the same lines, credit signifies an increase in incomes and gains and debit signifies a decrease in incomes and gains. On the other hand, for the accounts of expenses and losses, debit signifies an increase in expenses and losses, whereas credit signifies a decrease in expenses and losses. We have discussed that in double entry system of accounting, every transaction involves equal amount of debit and credit. This concept was also discussed to an extent in previous lecture under dual aspect accounting concept. This concept is one of the very strong foundation of double entry accounting and gives birth to basic accounting equation that is debit is equal to credit. Further. As all the debits are conclusively filterable to represent the assets of the business and all the credits are conclusively filterable to represent the liabilities of the business, 
the equation can also be written as assets equal to liabilities. We also know that all the liabilities can also be classified as internal liabilities and external liabilities. So, this equation can also be written as assets is equal to capital plus liabilities or assets minus capital is equal to liabilities or assets minus liabilities is equal to capital or assets minus liabilities minus capital shall be 0. This accounting equation represents that assets of a business are always equal to sum total of its external liabilities and owner's equity. As we have seen in the double entry system of accounting, every accounting transaction involves equal amount of debit and credit. This equation should always be balanced. The reason behind this is that internal and external liabilities signify arrangement of fund or money for the business. This money is usable in one or the other form of investment in business that is assets. So, the total amount of money arranged has to be equal to the total amount of invested money in business. In a way, we can conclude that we are looking at one and the same thing from two different dimensions. Some examples of assets are land, building, machinery, equipments, furniture, cash, bank balance, debtors, etc. While some examples of liabilities are bank loan, debentures, creditors, bank overdraft, outstanding expenses, etc. Similarly, some of the examples for owner's equity are capital contribution, retained profits in form of profit or loss, general reserve, etc. Now, as we have discussed about the accounting equation, let us understand this with the help of the examples. Let us take some transactions and try to understand how this affect our accounting equation. First transaction, Mr. X started business with cash investment of rupees 5 lakh. If we see the two aspects behind this accounting transaction, first is investment by owner Mr. X in business that is capital and other is receipt of an asset that is cash by the business. This can be represented on accounting equation as follows. On the capital and liability side, we have 5 lakh rupees of capital which is one side of your accounting equation whereas on the asset side you have cash of rupees 5 lakh. So, that is the other side. So, that equals 5 lakh of capital with 5 lakh of cash. Similarly, let us take second example, purchase of goods worth rupees 50,000 for cash. Now, the two aspects related to these transactions are receipt of an asset that is goods by the business and payment of another asset that is cash by the business. This will affect our accounting equation in the following manner. While cash will be decreased for 50,000 rupees as you are paying it back, so cash will reduce to 4 lakh 50,000 rupees while another asset goods comes in that is 50,000 rupees again. So, the total of assets is still 5 lakh rupees that is cash for 4 lakh 50,000 rupees and goods for 50,000 rupees that makes 5 lakh rupees of total assets while our capital is undisturbed for this transaction. So, that remains 5 lakh rupees. So, both sides are equal. Let us take third transaction sold goods costing rupees 20,000 for rupees 30,000 to Mr. A for credit. In this transaction, the first aspect is generation of a new asset that is debtor Mr. A for rupees 30,000 to whom we have sold goods for credit and payment is not yet received. Now, it is important to see that we have sold goods worth rupees 20,000 for rupees 30,000 to Mr. X. That means, goods are decreasing for rupees 20,000. So, goods will reduce from 50,000 to 30,000 that is 50,000 minus 20,000 rupees and a new asset for 10, 30,000 that is Mr. A who is your debtor is in the process now and for this reason what we see is there is a disbalance of 10,000 rupees. 
this is actually the profit part because you are selling goods worth rupees 20,000 for 30,000. As the profit goes to the owners of the business, so this will add in the capital part. So, capital will rise from 5 lakh to 5 lakh 10,000 rupees because of this profit. So, our final equation will show capital of 5 lakh 10,000 rupees, cash of 4 lakh 50,000 rupees and goods of rupees 30,000 and debtors of rupees 30,000. So, both the sides are equal now, 5 lakh 10,000 of capital is equal to cash 4 lakh 50,000, goods 30,000 and debtors 30,000. So, the equation is balanced. In the next transaction, let us say there is a purchase of machinery for rupees 75,000 for cash from Punjab machinery. On one side of this transaction is machinery that you are bringing in the business, a new asset and on the other side there is a decrease of 75,000 rupees of cash. So, what we see is cash decreases from 4 lakh 50,000 to 3 lakh 75,000 that is 4 lakh 50,000 minus 75,000 rupees while a new asset machinery is generated for 75,000 rupees. So, what is happened? One side capital is intact 5 lakh 10,000 rupees, the other side you can see we have cash 3 lakh 75,000, goods 30,000, debtors 30,000 and machinery 75,000 all totaling to 5 lakh 10,000 again. That means, the equation is balanced. In the next transaction, let us say we take a loan of rupees 2 lakh rupees. Now, in this first aspect is receipt of cash that is an asset of rupees 2 lakh as you are taking loan and the second aspect is generation of a liability called loan and this money is a credit to you and you have to return this money back in future. So, that means there is a liability of rupees 2 lakh upon you. So, now if we see the equation apart from capital of 5 lakh 10,000 rupees on one side loan of 2 lakh rupees is added in that makes total of capital and liabilities 7 lakh 10,000 rupees. While on the other side cash increases by rupees 2 lakh from 375,000 it becomes 5 lakh 75,000 rupees and the total of assets also becomes 7 lakh 10,000 rupees. Next transaction let us go for an expense we paid salaries of rupees 30,000. Now, making a payment of 30,000 rupees on account of salary first aspect is cash will decrease by 30,000 rupees that is one thing and because this is an expense, expense will decrease the profitability of the business. So, this will be transferred to capital account that is the owner's account who has to ultimately bear all profits and losses. So, capital will decrease by 30,000 rupees will become 4 lakh 80,000 rupees and the other side cash will decrease by 30,000 rupees and will become 5 lakh 45,000 rupees and total of this equation on both the sides will become 6 lakh 80,000 each. In the next transaction, let us say we received a commission of rupees 15,000 in cash. Now, receiving commission in cash will result an increase in cash by rupees 15,000 this is affecting the asset side. Now, because this commission is your income and as we just now discussed any income or expense ultimately is to be borne by the owner of the business. So, this 15,000 will represent profitability of the business will increase the capital part of the owner. So, capital will increase from 4 lakh 80,000 to 4 lakh 95,000 because of this 15,000 rupees of commission. And as this is received in cash, cash will increase from 5 lakh 45,000 to 5 lakh 60,000 and ultimately we have a total of capital and liabilities of 6 lakh 95,000 rupees and same on the asset side including cash 5 lakh 60,000, goods rupees 30,000, debtors 30,000 and machinery rupees 75,000. Now, in our next transaction. Let us say we purchased goods worth rupees 40,000 for credit from Ram. As you are purchasing this goods for credit, there will be a liability on account of the supplier that is Mr. Ram. So, you have one more liability on the liability side that is creditor of rupees 40,000 Mr. Ram. Because you are purchasing goods, the stock of goods will increase. So, goods will increase from 30,000 to 70,000 rupees. This will make your equation balanced again. Let us say our next transaction is that we received payment from Mr. A. 
it was the third transaction where you sold goods worth rupees 30,000 to Mr. A for credit. Now, you are receiving payment from Mr. A. That will mean that as you are receiving the payment from Mr. A, the debtors will decrease for 30,000 rupees because you are receiving the payment. Now, Mr. A will not be debtor anymore to your business and this receipt is cash. So, cash will increase by 30,000 rupees. So, one asset has decreased and another asset has increased. So, cash becomes 5 lakh 90,000 while debtors become 0 and some total of all the assets become 5 lakh 90,000 plus 70,000 plus 75,000 rupees. So, that makes 7 lakh 35,000 rupees of total liabilities and 7 lakh 35,000 rupees of total assets. In our next transaction, let us say Mr. X the owner withdrew goods worth rupees 5,000 and cash rupees 10,000 for his personal use. If we see this transaction, what we see is owner is withdrawing back 15,000 rupees for his personal use. That is 5,000 rupees in the form of goods and 10,000 rupees in the form of cash. So, capital will decrease for 15,000 rupees and cash will decrease for 10,000 rupees and goods will decrease for 5,000 rupees. That means, on the asset side there is a decrease of 15,000 rupees in two assets that is cash 10,000 and goods 5,000 and on the other side we have a decrease of capital of 15,000 rupees and ultimately our uh, equation remain balanced. At the end of this 10 transactions taken for a business, what we can observe is the sum total of liabilities and capital including capital of 480,000 rupees and liabilities of 240,000 rupees makes 720,000 rupees of total, which is also the sum total of all the assets that is there in the equation after this 10 transactions. So, that implies that our accounting equation is balanced even after this 10 transactions and this continues for all the transactions of the business that debit is always equal to credit. So, we understand here that what is the double entry system of accounting and how the two aspects that is debit and credit are always equal. That is all for the day. Thank you.